How to Live a Christian Life by Irving Risch. I will start by asking a question. Is Jesus Christ alive and well on planet Earth? To answer this question, I will use scripture. The Lord said this, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. So what did he mean when he said this? He continued on by saying, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. In case you are wondering who the helper is, we are told in John chapter 14 verse 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. We see from this that the helper is the Holy Spirit. Also, we are told by the Lord that he needed to leave this world so that he can send the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So the question I started out asking, is Jesus Christ alive and well on planet Earth? We find the answer is yes, he is. He might not be in a bodily form, but in his spirit, he is here dwelling in every true believer. I wanted to start out by making you aware of this, because, with much prayer, I have asked the Lord to speak to you by His Spirit, who writes the Bible. All Scripture is breathed out by God, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. And, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21. You find I use much Scripture in this writing. I believe most of us have heard the story, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The story is about a person with dual personalities. All believers are like this, but not exactly in the same way. Some say it is the old man and the new man that conflicts with one another. I would rather say, it is the spirit and the flesh that are at war with one another. Here are some scriptures that put it this way. But I say, walk by the spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Romans chapter 8 verse 13. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 11. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. It may be beneficial to read Romans chapter 8 verses 1 to 5. There is, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. It would be good to focus on Romans chapter 8 verse 7. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law, indeed, it cannot. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Romans chapter 7 verse 18. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matthew chapter 26 verse 41. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such things, there is no law. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. There now, we have it right from God's word.
if you are one who has put your faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross, and have received forgiveness from your sins. But find that you are still struggling to lead the life that is pleasing to God but find you cannot do it, it is because you are living by the flesh and not the spirit. To help you in this area, let me use myself as an example. I became a Christian back on September 10, 1979, at 41 years of age. Becoming a Christian is becoming a Christ one, one who follows Christ. Not only did I trust him for my salvation, but I asked him to be Lord of my life. Then the struggle began. I tried, but I kept failing. I need to back up just a little. Before I trusted the Lord, I kept trying to be saved. I wanted to be saved sir and cried out to God many times, but nothing worked. It was like he was not answering my prayer. But he was, and I didn't know it. I was trying to do it in my flesh. Just like I was trying to live the Christian life in the flesh. This just doesn't work. I was living in Romans chapter 7. Let me show you what I was doing. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions. Romans chapter 7 verse 14 and 15, I believe all new Christians find themselves at this place the moment they give their lives to Christ. We put ourselves under the law. We try in our flesh to lead the life that is pleasing to God, but we find we cannot do it. This is the struggle we find out we are under, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law, that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in my inner being. But I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Romans chapter 7 verse 15 to 24. Paul, when he penned these words, hit the nail on the head. But in the very next line, he writes he gives us the reason but not the solution to the dilemma we are facing. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. Romans chapter 7 verse 25. We set our minds on serving the law of God, but our flesh is getting in the way. So the answer is we need to do something about the flesh, but we know the problem is because we cannot do it that way because we will just keep failing. It was the same way when I was trying to be saved. The problem is in the I. The I is the flesh, the me. In my flesh dwells no good thing. The scripture tells us this. So if the problem is the flesh, what can we do about it? Now we know the problem, we can look for the answer. And of course, we find the answer in the scriptures. Seeing we are still in the flesh, but also have the Spirit of God living in us, we find this is going on. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 5, we are living a dual life. Picture yourself standing between two fires. It is a cold winter night and you keep fueling both fires so both sides of you can stay warm at the same time. Let us say that one fire represents the flesh and the other the spirit. When you fuel the flesh fire, you feel good because you're feeling a part of your flesh. But when you fuel the spirit's fire, there also is a feeling of pleasing God in the way you are living your life. This feeling good in the flesh is only a temporary thing and is going to pass away when you die. If we let the flesh fire go out, and only fuel the spirit fire, we will be warm for all eternity. So the question is, how do we put the flesh fire out? Again, the scripture gives us the answer. First, we must realize this, you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if in fact the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Romans chapter 8 verse 9 to 11.
by faith, I believed on to salvation and by faith, we need to believe this scripture as well. After giving my life to the Lord, I said to him in a prayer, I am going to stop trying and just start trusting. I need to believe that I am not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 tells me, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. We are also told, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 6 verse 11. Going back to September 10, 1979, this was the day that I died, but it was just a short time after that. They buried me. I don't remember the date, but it was cold, so I had to go to a place called Villa Maria, which had an indoor pool. It was there that they buried me in baptism. The Villa Maria was a retired home for nuns. I had some old nuns witness my baptism, and one of them said they never saw a grown man get baptized. This was according to scripture. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 11 to 15 we read, In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. By cancelling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame, by triumphing over them in him. And this goes along with Romans chapter 6 verses 4 to 11. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. I hope you see how all this has tied all this together and in the spiritual world, the unseen world. This has all taken place. We need to look at things like God looks at them. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 11 The more we study this subject, the more we come to understand what happens to us in conversion. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. And we also read, from now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 16 and 17. All Christians are new creatures in Christ. We were all from the old fallen Adam, but we are now all from the risen Christ, the second Adam. Here is the difference, for as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Romans chapter 5 verse 19, again. Going back to my new birth, you must be born again, and my death to the old man that was in the first Adam. Now a new creation in Christ, the second Adam, all this scripture can and should apply to me and any other Christian. A lot has happened at the moment of conversion that many Christians are not aware of. Therefore, it is so important that we read our Bible to find all this out. Okay, let us get down to life's application. We are told that we are in the world, but not of the world. Also, Christ prayed to the Father for us in this way. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. John chapter 17. So how do we live a life pleasing to God in this corrupt world? If we died to self, but are alive to Christ we will do what is pleasing to him, and if we live by the spirit that is within us we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. 
If I try to watch something on TV or a movie, and it goes the way of the world, and most everything does, I just can't watch it. If it offends me, in my spirit, then it must be offensive to the Lord as well. I find I can't watch it or listen to it. We are told, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 and 3. In closing this paper, I will say that there is an answer to every problem in a Christian's life, and you will find the answer in the manual for life, the Bible. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 8.